Hello everyone! Happy Monday! Made it through the weekend. Thanks for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, where we relax and we craft and we work on a project together. Uh, thanks Replay viewers for watching and thank you YouTube Replay viewers for watching as well. This will go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies when we're done here tonight. So I hope you subscribe there. And also be sure to join the Penguin and Fish Crafters group over on Facebook. It's where you can share what you're working on and people are sharing what uh, the project that we're working on now as well as other personal projects. So we are currently working on the Charming Chevrons pattern by Krista Watson of Krista Quilts. And we've been working on this for a little while. Look how cute they look, those quilts. Uh, we are still at the stage of trimming our half, our half square triangles. So we are at a stage like this. So we have a diagonal line drawn down the middle there. And then we've sewn on either side. What we're doing now is trimming them in half uh, right, right along that diagonal. So we have two half square triangles where it's a square that's made up of two triangles. So there was one on that side. And then if we cut down the middle, then there's the one on the other side as well. So we're making a pile of those tonight and those will be trimmed down into a square. So we got rid of all the little edges on it. It's the perfect size. And then uh, eventually we'll be sewing them into a half chevron and then we'll be making a whole stack of other chevron half chevrons going in the other direction and together they'll make uh the the chevron and then when we make a pile of those we'll get our little zigzag going so that is the process here uh so that's what we're going to be doing tonight is more cutting those diagonals and trimming and pressing our little squares we're going to make our stack higher and higher tonight maybe we'll make it through the uh the one direction of chevrons tonight that'd be pretty cool uh, and one thing I wanted to share with you guys before we got going is I got some personal crafting in this weekend. I don't get to do that all that often. This, is, this hour in the evening is pretty much my craft time. Uh, but I did sneak in a little bit of crafting and I wanted to show you. So I'm working on a wall hanging to go behind me here of my little hedgehog. And I, I have the same red on the back of the quilt here. So what I did this weekend, I'm just going to get up so I can show you what I did this weekend is uh, I hand quilted, I hand quilted the center area so I can show you. So here we, oh, there we go. Let's rotate it. So here we are with it so far. <laughs> so I can't really show you the whole thing, but it's got a little, it's got a border made out of jeans from my jean quilt that I still don't have done. And then we got the, this hedgehog stitched really big on the inside. And you can see really closely there is um, all the little hand ties. So all these hand ties, which is holding, it's holding the quilt together. Like there's the back of the hand ties. So all those hand, hand little ties is what I did. Uh, I finished over uh, Sunday. So I already had them started about halfway done. So <laughs> eventually it'll be hanging, hanging up behind me right here, the little hedgehog. So now all I have to do on it is I'm going to stitch in the ditch on the, on the jeans and then throw a binding on and then we are done. So I almost have a project, an unfinished project uh, out of the way. And um, uh, we're getting there. So that'd be good. That might be the first first finished project for 2018 once we get that far. So who knows when I get another little chance to work on it. But now that all that high hand tying is done, uh, maybe one of these days when we're done here in the evening, I'll just keep the machine on, sew those, sew those borders really quickly, and then it's just a binding, uh, which is no, no big thing. So uh, I hope to have them up here soon. That'd be cool. <laughs> so awesome, guys. I'm going to flip you around and we will get going here tonight. All right. So just wanted to share that with you. I'm pretty excited about it. 
I feel like I feel like a big step is completed because um, you know all that quilting takes some time and uh, here, let me set this stuff aside and uh, you know I didn't have that much more to do yet but it it does feel good to have that part done so all right here's where we left off last time and uh, you know again I've been stacking these so that I can just take the bottom one down and we'll have our half chevron so I'm making sure that I uh, set that up uh, as I trim so I'm gonna throw that to the side and here's what we have left I'm hoping we make it through tonight but again these fabric piles are so deceiving uh, it just, they never get shorter and shorter. So let's, we'll see how we do tonight. So again, we're going to cut down that diagonal, which requires a rotary cutter. Here we go. That would have been interesting. We lost the rotary cutter for the night. Okay. And you guys, if you wanted to make a huge hedgehog, like what I showed you, that is just the... Uh, uh, my normal hedgehog embroidery from penguinandfish.com from the, the kit, and it's just blown up on the photocopier. So I, I kind of measured how big I wanted the uh, hedgehog to be in that space, and then I just uh, enlarged it until it was the size that I wanted. And uh, that was it, basically. To make it bigger. But yeah, I like to do that every once in a while, make giant embroideries. First of all, they go so much faster than small embroideries because you can make really big stitches. But I thought it'd be cute, cute as a little guy behind me during our scopes. Get cracking, exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Patricia. Yeah, man, it was, I was surprised at the not relief, but like the, yeah, the relief of the success of getting that next step done. So just the idea of, ooh, I have the whole center of that quilted uh, made me feel like I had made a lot of progress on, on the uh, unfinished guy. Yes, so Gretchen, I used yarn for the embroidery just because uh, it's nice and fat so you can see it. Uh, pretty easily from far away. You wouldn't have to do yarn. You could use like a couple strands of floss uh, if you if you wanted to. And then transferring is a little goofy. I used a tearaway stabilizer that I traced the, the design to, and then uh, it was an iron-on tearaway stabilizer. So uh, it goes on with an iron, so it sticks on after you press it, and then it, it, you have to tear it off, which is a pain with embroidery because you have to tear around every stitch without it pulling. But I stitched it onto a fabric that would be difficult to trace on and difficult to use carbon paper on. And I didn't want to use that much Fabri-Solvi, so that left me with like a tearaway stabilizer uh, where, I, where it's easy to get on and it works great, uh, but then I have to have to tear around each stitch, which is, which is annoying, but it, it got the job done. So now I just have that little bit of quilting to go and we'll have a basically a quilt. Double thread of crochet, crochet th thread. Yeah, that would totally work too. Oh, it's great for tying quilts. So for the tying, oh, that's a good idea. Double crochet thread. I had a lot of that available too. I should have done that. Um, I just used pearl cotton floss. And I don't know what size, probably size five pearl cotton floss in whatever I had. So I had some cream, which totally matched the background, but I didn't have enough for all of it. So I put a little light yellow in there as well. All right, here we go. Got that half chevron. So again, I'm going to put the bottom on the top so I can just pull it down. And when I sew, I'll, I'll know I'll have that half chevron right away. And we'll start making our pile bigger. 
Oh, that's how you do all your mission quilts that you make for the church. There is something so fun about hand tying a, a quilt, I think. Um, first of all, it takes away all the pressure of having to machine quilt it, which is pressure for me since I don't do it often and, you know, I don't know how to free motion quilt or anything yet. So it would just be some straight line stitching. And in the case with mine, with the hedgehog, I didn't want to stitch over all my embroidery and I didn't want to deal with doing like, you know, a halo around it or anything like that. So I just hand tied it. I think it looks really cute and uh, it adds texture to a quilt too with all those little tufts on it, I think. I, I, I think it's fun. It's still my go-to way of quilting. Could you use butcher paper stuff to iron on? Oh, that would probably have worked, Gretchen. Use butcher paper or not butcher paper. Yeah, that is butcher paper, right? With the um, kind of waxy side on one side and the dull side on the other. Yeah, so you could use that um, as long as it's easy to tear. And you know what? I bet you it's as easy to tear as this tear away um, stuff. So you could do a little test if you were worried about it. I actually, uh, just because the fabric I stitched it on is pretty stretchy, I, uh, um, or kind of stretchy, I, I put the fusible or the iron-on stabilizer on and then I also basted it with some thread. Freezer paper, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, freezer paper, um, not, not butcher paper, but I think that's about this, I think that's the same thing actually. Oh, you're learning how to cook beignets. Oh, that's kind of awesome, Deborah. Uh, yeah, so the freezer paper would probably work. I would test it just to make sure it's easy to tear away. That'd be the one thing I'd be a little worried about. It's not a perfect situation, um, transferring those large embroideries. I haven't quite found the best way of doing that. Um, if you're just if you're transferring to a normal fabric, like just like a, a muslin or a quilting weight cotton, then I'd skip that. I would just trace it if I could, or maybe use carbon paper, or you know, trace it through a light table. I would still do that with the large embroidery. I would, I would just not deal with this tearaway stabilizer thing at all. Um, the real reason I'm, I'm using it is because my fab, it's a fabric situation, not the embroidery situation. It's because my fabric is squishy, and um, so I, I couldn't use certain methods. But yeah, if you're just using some flat, uh, flat uh, quilting weight cotton uh, or muslin, you know, anything that you can see through and can lay flat and isn't squishy, then you know, go ahead and trace it or use carbon paper or something a little easier than this tear away stuff. Yeah, or just freehand it with a wash away marker. Lucy, that's, that'd be super swell as well. Or you could have like a little kid draw a whole design with the, the marker and then stitch on top of what they draw. I always thought that'd be a fun project. Especially if it's big, that'd be really neat. Make a wall hanging for a kid in their room with just a really big drawing of theirs or something that they can draw right on, I, I, that's, that'd be super fun. Oh, and yeah, there was a, a comment on my nail polish. So, uh, well, first of all, this leads into this, but like I managed to, I got to Target and got my flu shot today. So I I got all the dead flus in me now. So hopefully I don't don't get the flu, which would be nice. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, so we were at Target and we were running errands and stuff and, and I needed some nail polish remover. So I, I, uh, got a little thing of nail polish too, but it was this weird brand that I hadn't seen before. I think it's actually meant for kids, but it was like non-toxic and, you know, no chemicals and, and blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, we'll see what this one's all about. It's called piggy polish and it has like a little cartoon of a of a pig on it and it says safe for children like you know ages three and up sort of thing so I think it was kind of meant for kids uh, but I thought I'd give it a try uh, so so this is the color I got this pink 
But I'm telling you, I am, uh, yeah, I'm pretty undecided about it still. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Elmer's glue with some food coloring in it. <laughs> <laughs> like it's some watered down Elmer's glue, which makes me think that would be great for a little kid nail polish. Just Elmer's glue with some, some, uh, color in it. Cause man, I don't know. It, that's what it smelled like. So it didn't have that, you know, acetone smell at all. It smelled like, smelled like watered down Elmer's glue. And that's exactly how it's, um, that's exactly how it goes on too, as if it's like weird little layers of glue. And then it was really dull, but dull in, a, in the way that Elmer's glue would dry. I put my quick, my quick um, dry on top of it and that's why mine are shiny. So I'm putting, you know, it's non-toxic and then I'm putting this toxic quick dry on, so whatever. Uh, but anyway, I'm a little undecided on, on this weird nail polish, but I thought I'd give it a try. Piggy polish, I, I haven't seen it before. Yeah, so yeah, there's been like a lot of flu deaths this year. I don't know if it's more than usual, but I don't know, man, it seems like a lot. And I don't know, I hate getting the flu shot. I don't like the idea of putting that stuff in my body and all that, but you know. I don't know. My husband's going to South by Southwest in a couple weeks, and last time he did that, he got the flu super bad, so we made sure to get it this year just in case, and, you know, just because that's what you're supposed to do to stay healthy, etc. blah, so we did it. Um, <laughs> I got it in my right arm, though, this time instead of my left arm. Um because my left shoulder has been hurting a little bit lately, actually for a year or so, uh, since we did that rock climbing actually is when it, when it hurt. Um, so I've been rubbing on it more lately and I'm like, I can't, I can't massage my shoulder if, it, if I have a flu shot there too. So I got, I got the flu shot on my good, good arm this year. So I have two, two sore arms now, not just two sore shoulders, not just, not just my one sore shoulder. <laughs> it, it's totally bubble gummy, gummy, isn't it? My, my nail polish. I think it's fun. It didn't go on all that smooth, like it's kind of streaky and whatever too. So I mean, it's not great, but I could totally see like, you know, a little kid who really likes girls nail polish stuff and it'd be fun for them, this nail polish. Yours didn't get even sore this year. Yeah, mine's not achy like how I thought it was going to be. I did that thing that, um, I don't know, one of you guys here recommended where I kind of massaged it a little bit. And I even asked the doctor about that and she said like, yeah, that should help. So it's not so sore. Um, so I rubbed on it a little bit. But, you know, I always remember it like aching, aching quite a bit and it doesn't feel like that right now, although it's, you know, only day one. Oh, you never had a flu shot before, but your doctor convinced you this year. Yeah, I mean, I had gone like 10 years or so without getting a flu shot. And then, then basically my mom gilded me into it last year and I got one this year too, so. <laughs> uh, so it's done. We'll see how it goes. Oh yeah, it's totally like a, a Barbie pink. Oh, it's like, um, what's that bubble gum? Bubble yum. That's what it is. Do you remember bubble yum? Does that still exist? I wonder. We used to eat that all the time and it would get, you know, hard as a rock in your mouth immediately and your jaw would hurt, but that was totally this color. Actually, it even looked more like bubble yum before I put the uh, gloss um, quick dry on there because it was kind of that dull Bazooka, yeah, or bazooka. Those two. Bazookas were those square rectangle ones though, right? And bubble yum were the cylinder shapes. But yeah, it's kind of that color. <laughs> when I put it on, I'm like, oh, this color kind of makes my fingers look tan. <laughs> More tan than usual, which, um, you know, is weird because 
super white hands. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna explain what I'm doing here, just in case, uh, or hubba bubba, yeah, just in case you're coming in here new tonight and uh, didn't catch at the beginning here. So we're making half square triangles that we're gonna eventually sew into these chevrons. And then we will uh, sew the second half of the chevrons that will go right next to it and we'll make like squares of these chevrons. And uh, so what we're doing now is just prepping all these half square triangles. And I have a, I have a pile, a stack that we're working on just for this, the, the half chevrons that go in this direction. And we're just getting the half square triangles ready. And I'm stacking them up for later when we do actually sew them into those half chevrons. But we started out with two pieces of fabric, two squares. So I have this red square and then I have a pattern square. And uh, uh, we drew a pencil line down the diagonal of all of them. And then on the sewing machine, we sewed all of them on one side and then we sewed all of them on the other with a quarter inch seam allowance. And now I am cutting directly on that pencil line that we already had. And what we're doing is we're making a half square triangle with no waist. And it's actually two half square triangles. So, uh, you know, we still have this connected, like we haven't cut that diagonal yet. Um, but when we do cut it, we'll have a half square triangle on this side. See, it's a square made out of two triangles. And we'll have our second one on this side here. So that's, uh, that was our first step, is to draw that diagonal and sew on either side. And now we are separating the two by cutting on that diagonal, the same diagonal that we drew the pencil line on. And there we go. Here's our two half square triangles. Got one there and we have one here. And uh, there's, there's no waste at all. Like we didn't have to cut off a little triangle or how you have to do half square triangles sometimes. Um, it was a no waste half square triangle, which is awesome. Don't wanna waste all this pretty fabric. Uh, and then eventually these will, you know, these will if you rotate them just right, they'll be our chevron, half chevron. But all right, so we need to press these because we want them nice and flat and we want our seam nice and flat as well. We're gonna press it open, which means we're gonna separate that extra fabric there and press it flat like that. And then we want these to be the exact perfect size and the exact perfect size in this case is four and a half inches square and uh, we're using my four and a half inch ruler for that just to make it super duper easy. Uh, but first let's get them nice and flat. So I'm just gonna press it and then press it open to start out with. Really trying to get in that seam so it lies flat. And then flip it around and now I'm gonna just open up that seam. And that's just gonna make our whole piece even flatter. So instead of having three pieces of fabric on one side, we're having um, the two layers of fabric on both sides. So less bulk by pressing it open like this. And then for good measure, one more press on the front. So the chevron side together, do we press that seamer open? Uh, Gretchen, I believe we are pressing, uh, I'd have to read the instructions again, uh, but I believe all the seams are pressed open in this pattern. And I think, first of all, I think that's maybe not a strict rule. Like you can do it however you want. However, um, what I've heard, and I think this is the reason that Krista, uh, Krista Watson, uh, this, this design, uh, the designer for this pattern, uh, she likes pressing them open because it makes the whole quilt flatter for when you free motion quilt it. And that's why I'm making sure I do it the instruction ways by, by pressing them open uh, because I haven't free motion quilted before, so I need all the tips and tricks I can get. So if this is one of them, I'm gonna start out and uh, see if, if it makes sense. All right, um, 
Okay, so you worry about matching points. I'm a little worried about that as well, to be honest. Um, but actually, I think all that will need to happen is, so when you're matching points, you want to sew right, we're going to want to sew right through this point, right? Eventually here. So it ends up being like that. You can actually see, so maybe it pressed open is even better because you can actually see where that red, this red little triangle here, and maybe let me get a different one where it doesn't have tons of color everywhere. But okay, so this is pressed open. You can actually see the red coming back through the back. So when you put your two layers together, you'll be able to see that red point coming up. And as long as you sew right through that point, then when you open it up, you should have, um, you should have your good, good point there. Like you won't clip it or you won't um, have it be too big. So that's what you're working, that's what you're looking for to match points is, is that little bit right there. And uh, if you want to match points for sure, you know, when you have both sides and you have it layered together, and we might do this, uh, I might stick a pin. Let's get in focus here again. I might stick a pin right through there and then flip it and then make sure the pin goes through on this side as well, right there. Make sure it goes through this side as well. Then we know that our two points are lined up. So um, that might be a way to do it. Put that, put that pin in there just to just like straight through, just to line it up. It's a little extra step, but um, you know, it might go a long way if you're worried about the prints. For mine, mine are so full of pattern that I think if I have a little um, corner clipped or too wide or, or whatever, I don't think it's going to be all that horrible. But if you're doing like, if you're doing like a really high contrast uh, stuff, like if you have a black against white zigzags where every little, every little line, if it doesn't meet up, um, you'll notice it, then that for sure you might want to go in and make sure you got that pin in there just to line up those, those two points that might not be a horrible idea. There, my fingernail kind of match this background a little bit. I might do one or, yes, <laughs> the 80% the rule, Deborah. So, I mean, I might, I might do one or two like that just to kind of show you guys what I mean once we get that far, which we're definitely not that far. Um, and then we'll, um, then I probably will stop <laughs> for the sake of speed and that I don't care all that much. Uh, so I just want to finish this up. I forgot uh, one last thing. Um, we have, have this diagonal there. There's a diagonal on my ruler. I'm matching that diagonal with the diagonal on the fabric. And then I'm just trimming around all the excess. And it helps to have, um, for me, just for speed wise, it's helping me to have this ruler that's exactly four and a half inches and this rotating mat. So I don't have to move my ruler at all. I can just keep turning. So those two tools have been uh, helping me speed this process along. And then we have our perfect uh, four and a half inch square here. There we go. Yeah, so every time that you sew pieces together, Gretchen, you could... Ooh, we're trying to reconnect here. Oh, sorry guys, we, we got out of there for a second, but we're back. Um, it tried to reconnect, reconnect there for a second there. But if you're worried about the points matching, then definitely go ahead and do that extra step of pinning, pinning through where the point should be on both sides. And then you can clip the rest with like wonder clips or something. Oh, you got your ruler grip, grip your true grips, uh, true grip stickers for the bottom of your rulers. Aren't they the best? Um, so what Gretchen's talking about, and I have them on all my rulers now, they're these little stickers. I think I have, oh yeah, they're these true grip stickers 
So true grips, uh, you put them on the bottom of your ruler, kind of wherever they're see-through. I have uh, mine on either corner and then, then, you know, they come in like these little circles or these donuts. So the inside of the donut, I just stuck those into other places. But I mean, you press down and you're, I'm squiggling, your ruler is not moving at all. Um, not even, not even on fabric or different surfaces. It's just, it's just good. It's, it's great. So that's actually my, my most favorite tool. Uh, it's kind of weird, but it is these True Grip stickers. I always kind of have a fear of, of pressing. And uh, ever since I've gotten those True Grip stickers on all my rulers, uh, that fear of pressing has gone down quite a bit. Uh, when I used to press, there'd be the tendency to, if I couldn't reach right at the end very well, I would slip and my whole ruler would slip and then I'd cut you know, a big art, a big arc out of my ruler and, uh, or out of my fabric, I mean. And that has gone away with these, with these um, True Grip stickers on the bottom. I like it. My favorite thing. They don't last for ever and ever, but they do last a long time. Just after a while, um, you know, hours and hours and hours, they'll get, they get a little fuzzy and um, don't hold as well. But I, I um, totally love them. And there's a bunch in a pack, so you can have extras around too. Oop, flip that around. And I have a link to them. Um, I have a link to the products that I'm using in, in this episode uh, in the actual Facebook post here. So you can check it out there if you're interested. I love them. Well, I still can't tell if this stack is getting any smaller, but you know, every little bit counts. Eventually we will have the stack complete. <laughs> We're getting there. So it's a little, it's a little mystery, this never ending stack. How can never get, never gets shorter. Oh, it's, it's uh, so humid and hot by you. It was four degrees by us again. It was so cold. Uh, and I think it's gonna, it's gonna warm up a little bit, but then it's gonna be cold again for the Super Bowl. So if any of all y'all are coming here for the Super Bowl, you know, dress warmer than you think. Dress like you're an Eskimo. Lots of uh, fuzzy hats. Cover your ears. <laughs> you love Minneapolis. Yeah, it's it's been um it's starting all the crazy is starting to happen for this weekend. So like news people are starting to get up everywhere and at Mall of America and little events are happening everywhere. And it's also the St. Paul um, uh, Winterfest. That doesn't sound right. Winter Carnival. That's it. The Winter Carnival is going on right now and they have huge, uh, like an ice, like a three-story ice castle sort of looking thing. Um, made out of ice blocks and, you know, a whole pile of crazy fun stuff is going on right now. Oh, where you get fried butter in, in Minneapolis. I have not had fried butter before. <laughs> I haven't decided if I'm going to be going down there for this, like, downtown during the Super Bowl or anything. I, I think just parking is going to be a nightmare. I don't know if that'll be a thing. Could take light rail up maybe. 
I don't know, we'll see. It might be just a fun little event to go see what's going on downtown and stuff. It'll be neat. Except for the Vikings aren't there, but whatever. It would have been so crazy uh, for all these Minnesotans here if, if they would have gone. Oops, I don't think I got the bottom there. Oh, yeah, I did. Oh man, you got uh, nearly everything out of your office. Um, I think it's, I think they have ice and snow sculptures, actually. I haven't gone this year. Um, I've seen some Instagram posts from friends and stuff, and they for sure have a giant ice, um, like, building. <laughs> And um, they always have other sculptures and stuff. And I can't remember if there's snow, snow or ice. We've been gone for a little while. We're horrible. We don't do anything. All right. There's our half chevron here. All right, this is our stack still. Man, there's still quite a few here. So it might be one more night yet. That would be lucky if we'd finished tonight, but I don't, I don't think we're gonna make it there. Oh man, Jennifer. Well, good luck with all the rea rearranging. We did not build the snowman, and the snow just, well, right now, it's kind of funny, so we went out this morning, and it got super cold again, so the snow turned into that super dry snow again. So now it's snow where, in some places, you can stand on top of it, like on top of a huge hill, and then other times, you have, like, you can stand on top of it for a second, and then your foot caves in like a foot, <laughs> which is kind of fun. I kind of like that snow where, where it's like icy on the top just barely and then it cracks and then you're in like fluff again. <laughs> so that's kind of where it is now. So it wasn't, wasn't quite, uh, it was, it's definitely not snowman snow right now. Like you wouldn't be able to form it into anything. Um, so nope, but maybe when it starts thawing again, it'll be good to go. Alrighty. Um, ruler. Lost it there for a second. One more. So I am figuring out our next project a little bit more. The, uh, the sketchbook cover with the zipper pocket in the back. Uh, that'll be our next project, and I will have some info on that coming up, and I have a little surprise with it. Uh, one of our new patterns, I'm going to do a thing with that, and the uh, I thought we'd embroider a pattern on the front. You can do whatever you want, um, whatever pattern you want, but um, I will share one of my new patterns with you guys for that project. And uh, I'll be sending out, I'm, I'm figuring it out still, but I'll be sending an email out about it to um, coming up if you guys wanted to participate in, in that little sew-along deal of the, um, 
the sketchbook cover with the zipper pocket in the back. In the book, uh, it's from my Sew and Stitch Embroidery book, and in the book it has a felt kitty sewn on it. A little embroidery on the felt, but it's mostly just a, a cutout felt applique. Uh, which you're more than welcome to do, but we're gonna, it's kind of nice, you can do whatever you want on the cover. Um, you can do the kitty from the book. I'm going to do, I'm gonna do one of the new embroideries uh, for this this year coming up on the front of mine, and I'll show you that, and then if you guys want to do that one. Um, I think I'll put a little bundle together, because then you guys, if I do a bundle, oh, let me know if you're interested in something like this. I was thinking of selling uh, a little bundle of supplies uh, because then you don't have to look for the zipper and you don't have to look for the right size sketchbook cover, or not sketchbook cover, right size sketchbook for the cover, and uh, um, maybe some fabric and stuff too. So you guys can just um, take that off of your list of things to have to look for, like a zipper, the right size zipper, and the sketchbook. Um, you can adjust the size of the pattern if you want for sure, but um, I might, I'm, I'm thinking of getting, you know, a few, and, and the book too, because it's the patterns from the book, so. And maybe a few other cute things in there as well. So let me know if that's something you're interested in, and, and I'll, I'll get some emails out about this too. Um, so we can get, get it just right, what, you, what you'll want for for the project, but we'll be doing that later. Definitely, be, uh, definitely when we're done with the quilt top, this quilt top. Uh, I'm hoping that we'll do that project in between this quilt top and quilting it. So a little kind of a little mini break from this project to do a little fun, little fun sewing slash embroidery project. Um, I think these book covers would be just super great for for kids, just having that sketchbook, and you can put little colored pencils or crayons or whatever in the zippered pouch in the back, and uh, it'd be just like a fun go um, on the go little book to bring with anywhere. So we'll do that, and then we'll come back to this project and do the free motion quilting. You really like the folder you made in the group? Oh, you have all sorts of supplies, yay! That's awesome, yeah, that was a fun project. So yeah, this would be a, like a little fun companion piece for that, uh, that Patty Young uh, project. The Mod Kid travel art folio project from a few months ago. Oh, that little kitty pin. Yes, so actually the kitty pin, oh, I don't, I'm not wearing that sweater today, but if you guys watched any other time that it's been winter, I've been wearing my uh, sweater that has the two little kitty pins on. I do actually have a link to that blog post. It's a free pattern. But the kitty on the sketchbook cover from the book is basically pretty much that same cat, that same kitty same shape and everything. So you could just uh, use that for your book cover if you want to. Or turn it in a pin. That would work. But yeah, that, that little kitty pin, it's so fast and easy and fun. Where you can just play with felt and teeny little bits of embroidery or fill the whole thing with embroidery if you want. If you want, like, stitch every little kitty hair in there. Or maybe you just want to stitch a few whiskers or something into the little face. Uh, it's totally up to you. But yeah, that ends up as a cute little pin. All right, we are. Ooh, I like my nails with this with this teal blue. It's, it's kind of fun. All right, let's trim this guy up. Line up that diagonal again. And I'm trying to make sure that I have excess along all the outsides of my ruler here. Because I'm trimming it down. I don't want it to be too small. Oh yeah, different colors too. Yeah, you can make all sorts of different colored kitty cats. 
And, uh, you know, you can do kitty portraits, too, with those pins. Just, uh, you know, make it the same color as a kitty or same markings. Then it'll, it'll look like, it'll be a little kitty portrait. It'll look like your kitty. Man, I still think we have at least 10 of these to go. Maybe even more, that deceiving little stack. That never gets smaller. All right, half chevron again. It'll be fun to sew all these together though. That, that's been fun, sewing all the the two half square triangles together to make that chevron, half of a chevron. Ooh, your 29 year old wants a tabby one, cute. We used to have two tabby kittens when we were little. And I know I probably talked about this before, but they were from my grandma's farm. So they were farm cats. And one was a, a light gray tabby and one was a dark gray, like, you know, black tiger tabby, um, both like tiger kitties. Um, and I, I named them both and I thought I was so clever. Um, <laughs> they're named Kitty and Caddy and they were awesome. So they were, they were our little Kitty and Caddy. We had those guys forever. Kitty, Kitty, um, Kitty was super old. Uh, the the uh, kitty pins that I'm talking about, you can find the link for them in this Facebook post. So uh, if you uh, go to the Penguin and Fish page again, uh, you know, the video, like if you're watching the video now, it's probably taking up your whole screen and just the comments and stuff. But if you go to, you know, like the Penguin and Fish feed, where you can see, you know, like a normal Facebook feed where you can see this video playing in that description on the Facebook post uh, is, is um, where you can find the link. If you scroll into it, you can find the link to, to the kitty pins. And it's a, it's a free pattern. It's on the Better Homes and Garden um, How to Sew website. But yeah, fun and easy. Oh, Bill, that's a great cat name. I love cat names uh, with uh, that are that are human names. Uh, our our cat that we had after Kitty and Caddy was named Sammy, and the current cat at my parents' house. These are all at my parents' house, and they're all outdoor kind of strays that just kind of hang out. Um. Well, they're not really strays. This, the last, the latest one is, but he comes up and wants to get petted and wants to sit in your lap and stuff. His name is Chad, <laughs> which makes me laugh every time I hear it. I think it's just a funny cat name. It's named Chad because it's super chatty. It, it'll just, uh, it'll just meow and meow and meow. Or it did. It doesn't as much anymore. But when it, when uh, it first started hanging out, it would just meow like crazy so he was pretty chatty so my mom named him chad <laughs> which is an awesome cat name i think oh a parrot called lewis that's cute that's cute too i miss chad i want to go see him Your cat is Frankie. See, real human names are fun. After Kurt Cobain's daughter, oh, that's funny. Speaking of Frankie, if you guys uh, want a fun Netflix show and you hadn't seen it yet, Grace and Frankie is, I think, my current favorite show on Netflix right now. So I highly recommend. I think it's in the fourth season now.
All right, open this up. Oh, this is a little hot. It's burning me a little. <laughs> Caliente, the cat. Cute. Ooh, this one is just big enough. Not much to trim off of here. Oh yeah, Jane Fonda and um, Lily Tomlin are the two characters from, uh, are the two main characters from Grace and Frankie. And oh my god, they are the funniest two people together. Like I laugh out loud in every episode because they're just, it's just too sweet. It's one of those, um, it's one of those shows that, you know, it deals with issues, uh, but it's, that whole lighthearted and funny, like so funny, and you care about every single character in it. Um, and every character is funny and sweet and, you know, is all dealing with their own thing. But it, it's just, you feel good after every episode. Like you feel like full after um, every episode, I think. Like content, man. I might watch the. I, I just finished the um the most recent the most recent season. I think just came out like a week ago or something, and I already have them all watched. I've watched every single one already. Um, but it's good. 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 Highly recommend. That'd be a good while you so, while you so um, show. How we doing here? Oh, we got a few minutes left to do a few more of these. I think. I'm tempted to count the pile of how many things I have left, um, but I think. Maybe I better just leave it. Be more zen about it. Leave the pile that I have left. Oh, Stranger Things is good too. Uh, Grace and Frankie, though, is so much more chill than Stranger Things, for sure. It's just pure enjoy enjoyment, basically. I love it. I think they're strawberries. Although they do kind of look like, well... They could be raspberries. Maybe they are raspberries. I'm trying to think of if I know what strawberry leaves look like versus versus raspberries. I'm calling them strawberries. Oops. Martin Sheen's in it too. That's right. I'm not getting that wrong, am I? Um, and Sam Shepard is that the other? Is that is that his name? They're in it too. You like the black before this one? Oh, the one with this crazy one with the um, that it almost looks like a gemstone, doesn't it? Like cuts of a diamond or something, but you know, in bright colors. Yeah, Black Mirror, that one's been on my list, but I don't know. I needed some light heart in this, so Grace and Frankie it was, and, and did not disappoint. Laugh out loud and, and just touching and sweet every single episode. Heartfelt. 
all those nice words. And just straight up entertaining. I think anyone who watched it would be entertained. I'd like to think so, at least. All right, those could be raspberries or strawberries, I think. I'm calling them strawberries. All right, I think we'll do one more tonight. And the stack's getting a little less. If we get them done tomorrow, the stack, uh, and we have time yet, we can for sure start sewing sewing the chevron, the half chevrons together. That'd be awesome. That'd be a nice head start on that. All right. Open that seam. There we go. Every once in a while, it's a little difficult to get that seam open. They just want to stick together. Maybe Black Mirror will have to be my, my next TV show. I ran out of TV again. <laughs> hate when that happens. Sad that my show's finished again. I could watch all the Grace and Frankies though again. <laughs> I could probably watch the Stranger Things again too, but that's just so intense. I don't know if I can do that again when I'm just trying to chill. That's more of a, Stranger Things is more of a, I can only watch with my husband because it's not fair if one of us knows more than the other. And um, <laughs> just like wring our fingers the entire time sort of thing. Whereas Grace and Frankie is just, Relax and chill and enjoy your time watching this TV. Before Game of Thrones comes out again, though, which I don't think is going to be too, until 2019 now, right? Um, before that comes out again, I'll have to binge watch every season again, probably. Just get up to date on it again. was bringing about how a great deal she got a oh, ton of fabric but has blemishes everywhere oh man yeah it's tough I mean it's fun to get a bunch of free fabric for sure but if um you know if there's a lot to have to deal with but man if you can still get some pretty yardage out of it out of it or if it's like the prettiest floral or, or something that you've ever seen then you know might be worth it to cut around little blemishes or something or you could just over dye it. That'd be kind of fun. I've never done that before um, where you, or bleach it. Have you guys ever tried that with fabric? I haven't done either, but over dyeing is when you take a fabric and then you get, a, get dye and then you just dye on top of it. And sometimes you can see the little pattern and stuff going through because the dye um, works differently with each fabric. And I've seen that before where someone dyed a quilt indigo and you could still tell what the quilt was and everything, and it was just so beautiful. So that, that'd be kind of a fun thing if you got a bunch of yardage that happened to be, um, you know, with blemishes on it. Or like, you know, just dirty, like dirty for some reason would be a fun to try over dyeing it. And then the other way I've seen that is people bleach it and it washes away a lot of the dye. So it kind of, it just... It just makes it pale, basically. Whatever pattern you have or, or whatever you have, um, it just becomes pale. And it, you know, it's an experiment too because the bleach reacts differently with, oh man, I think it's bleach. What else would it be? I think it's bleach. But that'd be another way to <laughs> affect your fabric to get rid of uh, blemishes. Oh, you love tie dyeing. That's something I've never done, I don't think. Ooh, dyeing black and white fabric. Oh yeah, that'd be, I don't know, one of these days I gotta try that. Get some dye, get a big bucket, one of my Sterilite bins <laughs> that I have a bajillion of, and um, 
get some dye and try and over dye some fabric or something. Actually, I'd love to try, I have, you know, I was talking about I have all that muslin, uh, scrap muslin. I'd love to just improv piece all that together and then maybe try over dyeing that into a color. That might be kind of fun. Ooh, yeah, or tie dye the whole thing with like rubber bands and, and uh, or fold it up and do something with it. Yep, might be time to start playing with, with some dye. I don't know. That sounds like a summer project. <laughs> That's not happening. Happening in, in our four degree weather here. That's for sure. All right, this is my real, real end one. <laughs> That last purple one was going to be my last one, but these two will be my, my last one for the, for the evening. So I don't hold you guys up any longer than, than you want to be here. I typically try and have these be about an hour. Sometimes if we just, if we're so close to finishing something, we will um, go a little longer. Uh, but most of the time I try and keep it to an hour. Ooh, like with batiks. Oh, see, that would be cool. Ooh, I love that idea. Kind of do it like a batik where you um, draw with a bunch of wax on it first and then dye it. And then you have, then you like, I don't know, you have to melt that wax off somehow. Probably just in a hot bath or something. And um, then you can leave. Ooh, man, I love that idea. I'm going to just see if I can find out more how to do that. First, I got to make, make a quilt for a set of out of my scrap fabric. But yeah, I'd love to do some playing with dye and everything with that. Ooh, that'd be fun. I'm loving it. Ooh, just finished binding your baby quilt. Good work, Robin. Okay, so here's the last half chevron for the evening. So our stack, <laughs> our stack is getting a little bit bigger here. Um, we have just this many more to do. So I'm hoping Oh, I don't want to count it. I don't want to jinx, jinx myself, but I'm going to, I think we'll be able to finish this up tomorrow and then we'll start sewing these together. And, you know, when we sew them together, we'll end up with our half chevron and they're all going to go in this direction. And then we have a whole second pack that's like this tall um, that will be our chevrons that go in the other direction. We just made one, but this is what the other ones will go like. So we'll have the two going two, two ways. And then we'll get like our zigzag going. Let's get one more here and we can get a sense of a sense of the zigzag a little bit. So there, it'll start. Let me get you guys over a little bit. They'll start looking like, like this. I only have the one here, so I can't show you any more zigzag than that. But uh, so we will have this like red background and um, just a crazy colorful zigzag going through the whole piece uh, for our, for our Charming Chevron's quilt. So again, this is the Charming Chevron's quilt. Uh, it's by Krista Quilts, Krista Watson of Krista Quilts, and uh, I do have a link for this in the Facebook post if you want to join us. We will be here a long time yet working on this. Uh, we have, like I said, the whole other, <laughs> other half of these to do this direction of, and then getting them together yet. So uh, we'll be here for uh, enough time that if you're just joining now, uh, you'll, be, you'll be good to go with us. Um, so yeah, so again, tomorrow we'll finish up this stack here. So I'm going to flip you around and we will call it an evening, everyone. Hello again. So we got a good stack going and just, just these itty bitty tiny, tiny stack, right? That's a tiny stack. I'm still, I'm going to guess like eight. <laughs> we'll have to see. My guess is like a bowl of candy and you have to guess, or the jar of candy and you have to guess how many are in there. So I'm, I'm calling it eight. We'll see. We'll see how it is tomorrow. Uh, but thanks again, guys, for joining me tonight. Uh, this will go up on Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube when we're done here. Right now, I'll start uploading it. And you can watch all the replays for all the projects there on YouTube. They're organized by project, so you can see some of the other pro previous projects that we've done. Um, you know, and you can still work on those beginning to end. Like if you want to embroider, learn how to do that, uh, you can pick a project that we've already done and check it out there. And I will have more info on the next project, the sketchbook cover with the zipper pocket from my book, Sew and Stitch Embroidery. Coming up, uh, probably not this week, maybe not even next week, but coming up soon. So be sure that you're on my 
email newsletter and uh, you'll get you'll get that email and you can do that just by going to penguinandfish.com and a little pop-up will will happen for you there so awesome guys uh, nice chatting again with all y'all um, hearing all your cute cat names <laughs> uh, I'll check you out tomorrow uh, 8 30 p.m. tomorrow central time good night everyone <laughs>